everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood hangar hobbit here, and welcome aboard Thatch's Buffalo, a rank 1 battle 2.3 premium for the Americans. And letting you know right off the bat, this is a green eggs and ham match, because look down there, it's Cologne. My entire team raced the train cars. Guess what happened to them? Can you say slaughtered, boys and girls? I think you can. But hey, it's a USA team. What do you expect? USA teams. Guaranteed buckets of fail for several years now. Oh well, what can you do? Uh, be fun if I got the Russians occasionally with this, but no. Nearly always nothing but USA players. Maybe one spit or a hurricane. So, what else can you do but charge in here and try to kill as many things as humanly possible before I get completely schnockered as I'm outnumbered probably four and a half maybe five to one right now and there went my auto squad buddy cuz yep he charged in with the rest oh well hi there mr. e4 bye there mr. e4 Oh, look at the sea of red. Oh, there went another one. I think all we've got left at this point is bloody bombers. <sighs> Word of advice, if you're going to fly junk like the B-10 and the B-18, stick to ground forces, people. I am so sick of low tier being dominated by the biggest pile of crap bombers in the USA friggin' lineups. I mean, good lord, there are good bombers, you know. Things with lots of freedom cows. Why do you have to keep flying the crappy ones? <sighs> oh. And of course, they're helicoptering up to me because I'm pretty much all that's left to shoot at. So they're all going, mine, mine, mine. <sighs> Well, what can you do? Hi there, Mr. 109. How are you doing? Now, for those that wonder such things, 400 meter convergence, stealth on everything. This has the early pre-war belts, too, so... Yeah, not going to be getting too many fires. You pretty much got to pound them to death. Which this thing does surprisingly well. Well, there's one more down. Come on, Mr. 109. At this point, I don't care. I'll be happy to take a head on with you. Because I need as many of you gone as humanly possible. Oh, there's a crit, but mm, with a 109, this BR, crits don't really mean much. Not unless you blow the tail control. Anything else, and they're still going to have more than enough energy to slaughter you. No. No. Just come here now. You be nice and come here. Are you going to run for the runway? Really? You outnumbered me five to friggin' one, and you're going to run to the runway? Oh, and you left your poor little 111 defenseless. Isn't that a shame? Hi. Bye. Uh, why would you do that, Mr. 109? That was just mean. Leave that poor little feller defenseless. Come on. And there goes my motor. But, like I said, fully expected this match to be filled with fail. Look back there. All I got left is a crappy B-34... They've still got three fighters, plus the Stuka, plus another HE-111. Uh. Oh, come on. Just stay up a little longer. And uh, nope. Nope. Dang shame, too, because that would have been my ace. Oh, well. Come on, one of you finish me off. In my misery already. 
Maybe the Stuco will get me. I'm trying to build up just a little bit of speed. Maybe I can tip that nose up, but... And nope. Wing shot. Engine shot. Tail shot. And still, what do you expect? Like I said, USA teams. When you won't fail, accept no substitutes. Now, as I'm climbing up here, let me tell you a little bit about this bird. This is named after John Jimmy Thatch, famous for the Thatch Weave. He was born about 120 miles from here in Hobbit Hill, ended up an admiral. And I know everybody likes to talk about the Thatch Weave, which, by the way, would have actually probably saved my team if they'd actually known how it works. Which, for those that don't, that's when you take two planes, space them apart a bit, and then when one of them gets jumped by a zero, he turns in to the other guy. So if the zero stays on his tail, yeah, he's going to be getting freedom cows to the face. This worked really good at taking the older, slower wildcats and giving them a way to fight back against the faster, more agile, more heavily armed zeros. In fact, no less than Sobiro Sakai said that those gave him fits. Because once they came up with that tactic, yeah, even the Wildcats wasn't easy prey anymore. Because if they got tunnel visioned even for a second, hello, Freedom Cows. Yeah, and I don't care how many freaking cannons you put on a zero, yeah, that thing gets punched with 50 cal API rounds, it's a flaming freaking wreck. But the part I always thought was more interesting with Thatch wasn't the freaking Thatch Weave, but the Big Blue Blanket. Which, for those that's never heard of that, he came up with the idea of protecting the carriers from kamikazes by putting destroyers with radar way out away from the carriers, and the second they'd picked up them waves of kamikazes, they would call a carrier who would already have a whole bunch of close air support fighters up who would intercept those kamikazes over 100 miles away from the carrier fleet, making those kamikazes nothing but target practice. Really smart move, Admiral. Thumbs up on that one. Oh, hello there, Mr. HE-111. Eh, normally I don't go after bombers, but eh, you're pretty much the only thing up here right now. So, me and you, I think, are going to have a few words. Yeah, see, the rest of the bad guys are way down low, and I don't quite want to give up on my altitude yet. Now, for this match, I tried out the ground target belts, simply because they work so good in the martlet. But honestly, it don't really matter with this. The early belts are nearly all AP anyway, so... Eh, it's more of a personal choice than anything else. If you feel like you need the tracers or you want a little tiny better chance of fire, eh, go for the ground targets. Otherwise, take the stealth. Ooh, Mr. Snooka is trying to be sneaky. Well, guess what, Mr. Snooka? I sees you. Oh, what the heck are you doing? That ain't gonna work. You ain't gonna be able to shoot me with them back gunners in that direction. Oh, say goodbye to that tail, buddy. I don't know what it is with players flying upside down like that. That's just silly. What are you going to do up upside down like that? That's just nuts. Oh, but you come here, Mr. 111. It's just you and me now. Mr. Stuka's not going to save you. Nope, afraid not. Nope, there he went. Took a little while. Yeah, unless you get pilot snipes, you're not going to get insta-kills with this thing. Oh, just a little more. Nope, nope. Good thing about this, though, is you can ride the living heck out of the whip on this thing. This is one of the few planes I've seen that you can just whip and whip and whip till it's about to hit red line, and then you just pop it back to 100%, and that temperature drops like a rock. Man, I wish I would get temp drops that quick on something like my freaking Spitfires. I don't know why either because this thing doesn't have a great cowling on it. I don't know if it's just because this game this bird's been in here since like 1.31 and it's bugged or what. But hey, I'm not complaining. Are you trying to take me out with them little pop guns? 
Really? Uh, what is it lately with bombers that think they're freaking fighters? I don't know, but I've been seeing a whole lot of them. The bombers just charging in and acting like they're fighter planes. Guess what, Mr. 111? You're not a fighter plane. Not even slightly a good fighter. Now, now you're a piece of junk. Not that you wasn't a piece of junk before. Uh, silly bombers. In fact, I don't know why people spam bombers at this BR. At this BR, freaking bombers are just, just god awful. If you want to spam bombers, do it somewhere where you get 20 mils or a whole pile of freedom cows. But look at that. Look how quick it went from completely red to in the white. What was that, like eight seconds? Oh, that is just so nice. Man, what I wouldn't give to have that on my freaking Spitfires or some of the later Corsairs. That would be so much easier. Now I'm going to speed up time a bit because it takes a while for me to find them next targets to shoot. Just going to have to do me a little overwatch here. Go check the runway. The usual stuff. This thing climbs though surprisingly good for a friggin' tier 1 2.3. Don't let that 2.3 BR and the friggin' 10 meter per second stats fool you. Because with this being able to just ride the whip, eh, she can climb. Uh, stupid flap bug, I did not push the flaps. Uh, silly thing. Oh. Another good positive about this is it's tanky. See that? There's their runway. They're runway camping. If I was in something like one of the early spits, I'd probably already be a fireball. But this little short stout thing, not it the easiest thing for AAA to kill. Ooh, let's see what we got. 109 and a Stuka. Uh, 109, you got to go first. Uh, got some solid hits. But uh, take what I can get. Dodge all this stupid flack. Jeez. Excuse me. Oh, hi, Stuka. Well, since you're lined up like that, might as well finish you off there. And yes, I'll keep the gun split, even on something at this low a BR. Only thing I use the guns together with is the Italians. Because with those little Italian pop guns, yeah, you need way to shot. But for this, eh, I just use the Freedom Cows and then save the 30 Cows for maybe taking a little bit of ground target. Thank you, I appreciate. That's a big OGG. And look, smoking, beat all the crap. It doesn't care. It's a buffalo. It's a little buffalo, short and stout. Out the front's where the DACA comes out. As you can tell, I have fun in this little thing. It's derpy and stupid, but it's fun. Hey, first place on the team, another four kills. Heck yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that in New York Minute. So what do I think about this bird? Eh, you're not going to be doing any grinding with it. But when the Christmas sale comes up, if you don't already have it, and you want something cheap and fun to fly, eh, you can do worse with this. This thing's surprisingly agile. It's decent to dive. Got a whole crap ton of DACA on it. Eh, I always have fun with it. I think it's a fun little bird. So why not grab it? And for a slight channel update, I'm going to try to have videos up twice a week, but I can't tell you at this moment exactly which days are going to be up because the daughter-in-law is moving back up here to Hobbit Hill, so I'm going to have three grandkids underfoot. Oh, joy. Wonderful me fighting the grandkids for the bandwidth. What a fun way to spend Christmas. I'm hoping to do it either Mondays and Fridays or Tuesdays and Saturdays, but it's all going to depend on... When the kids are home and what the schedule is going to be like. Because, good Lord, I do not want to be playing while they're trying to take the bandwidth. 
It's so fun to be lined up, about to hit that killer shot, and then suddenly my ping shoots to 300 because they're watching Korean pop videos. Uh, Well, be sure to like and share, and I hope to see you up there in the clouds. Have a good one, y'all.